Hi, everybody. I'm Tamara Zoner. And I'm John Davis. Welcome to Spirit Cafe. Come in, sit down, and grab a cup of love. A Spirituality Without the Guilt podcast. Well, hello, my friends, and welcome to Spirit Cafe. I'm very excited today. We have a, a guest on that I know very little about or a little about what she does and real excited about uh, about diving into that and experiencing something new. Uh, but before we bring our guests in, let me bring in the lady of love herself, the woman of wonder, the amigo of affability, my co-host in crime, <laughs> the lovely and powerful Tamra Zoner. Hello, Tamra Zoner. How are you? Hello, John. The crime of love. Maybe. Crime of love. <laughs> <laughs> if love is a crime, then I'm a bandit. <laughs> Put me away. Put me right. away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Tamara, we have someone today who should be right up your alley. Um, you know, you being the, the happiness coach or, or a happiness coach. And today we have a certified dream manager here with us today, oh. which I'm really excited about. You know, she's a cult, a coaching consultant, an expert in dream rescue. Uh, so let's just cut to the chase and bring in Miss Debbie Cruz. How are you today, Debbie? I'm wonderful. How are you? Oh, wonderful, wonderful. A little, little warm here in Ohio. Uh, where are you located? Oh, yeah. I'm in New York. So, yeah, it's getting warm here, too. <laughs> yeah. I, I kicked on my AC this morning. I hadn't had it on yet, but yesterday it was didn't get didn't get below 80 all night long. So it was like, yeah, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Debbie, what the heck is a certified dream manager? <laughs> yes, I like to call myself the dream pollinator because <laughs> my name in Hebrew means the bee seeker. <laughs> so I believe that bees do the impossible and they only want success for everybody around them and for everything to be beautiful. So that's why I, I ch changed the name to make it a little bit more creative to the dream pollinator. So what it is, is just really believing what is in your heart was meant for you. You are divinely made on purpose. And it's once you're actually in tune with what you feel in your heart and you can go and actually plan it out and touch it and feel it and have it come true, your whole life changes. And it's your, your heart is your connection to God. So finding your dreams, identifying them, realizing that they were made just for you. They're not made to sit on the shelf and be like, wow, that would really love to do that, but I can't. Mm -hmm. And get rid of all those roadblocks in the way. And of course, the number ones are, I can't because I don't have the education. I can't because I don't have the money. I can't because I don't live there. I can't because I'm not physically fit. And we identify all of those right away and we work on that while we work on a plan to get to your dreams. And it starts with just a session of write down a hundred dreams, write mm. down a hundred dreams and dig in deep. And once you get one, you see that there's another and you see that some dreams are really goals to get to the big dream. So mm. we dig into a hundred dreams and we identify the first five. So there's the big dreams, there's the middle dreams, and there's the dream we can get off the plate right away. One guy just wanted to go see a concert. He's like, I really just want to see the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I'm like, <laughs> kind of not that hard. And well, except they weren't on tour because it was COVID. But <laughs> <laughs> then, right. interestingly enough, that day, they announced a whole new set of tour dates for the summer. So nice synchronicity. Yeah. So once you put it out there, it's just like that. It's like, wow, that dream wasn't that hard. The only roadblock was for them to actually be on tour. And once I put it out there to God and said, I want to do this, they announced tour dates. Well, you are, you are preaching to the choir, lady. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you are preaching to the choir. because, because uh, We manifest stuff into our lives all the time that way. And uh, in fact, I, in, in an odd way, uh, I manifested Tamara's owner into my life <laughs> as a co-host because uh, I was I was needing to get back into my spirituality and, and along she came. Um, I, lo I, lo I love it. I love it a lot. It reminds me a lot of, of Tamara's passion test in, in the way it's yeah. the way it's formulated. I thought it was really interesting. Tamara, what are your thoughts on that? I, you know, I love it so much because I think that our 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 dreams are so important and in society we're socialized to tamp them down 
and forget about them and follow a more rational path. And then we lose the zest of life when we do that. So what you're doing is a great service in the world, Debbie. It's so important for people to be willing to let those dreams rise back up and to move toward them. And I love, I love the fact, Debbie, that you, that you actually, you, you actually took it into a space where you said what they feel in their heart. Yeah. Cause to me, the authentic self lives in the heart heart. Yeah. And, and, you know, we, to be one with God is, is to be authentic because that's, that's the nature of ourselves is joy and love. And so um, I love the fact that your, that your work is based around the feeling instead of the thinking. Yes. Yeah. I mean, God didn't make you and bring you here to make fun of you and have you be miserable. He didn't, that's not his <laughs> purpose. Although some days it we're meant to feel that way, right? We are, society tells us a lot to feel that way. And that's absolutely not true. We're not here to be compared to other people. We're not here to be told, oh, it didn't happen in this time frame. It didn't follow the sequence. You were here for a reason. Your dreams are yours. You're, they're, you're not unrealistic. You're not crazy for wanting to do things. It was in your heart for a reason. So my example is when I was younger, I, I kept seeing myself in a doctor's jacket, mm. which nobody around me was a doctor. I didn't really know what, I knew that doctors heal, healed people. So that's what I saw. And I have the hugest fear of blood. Like I pass out notoriously. You say, we talk about blood. Someone's like, you want to know all about my ailments? And I'm like, no, no, I don't, I can't, I can't listen. <laughs> like I'm passing stop, out. Stop. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, but I have a sympathy pains too. So mm -hmm. someone's like, you're, oh my God, my finger. And I'm like, yes, I feel it. Like, I'm just <laughs> like that. Oh, and so you're, emp you're empathetic. You're empathetic. I'm empathetic. And, you know, it made no sense. And in, so I, I was like, told oh you can't do that because you look at you you can't even handle blood and I'm like why would I have this dream and it made me crazy and years ago healthcare found me I, and I was like you're you're crazy because I can't deal with blood and you want me to talk about blood and look at it all day that's a little crazy <laughs> it'll be great it'll be fine so I worked at um, a laboratory that what they do is they take blood from people all day. And, and I, I know everything about blood now. And they're like, you're so great. You made it through the day without passing out. I'm like, no, no, no I just got really good at it. <laughs> so, <laughs> you didn't see. <laughs> but um, I went into another, uh, I went to hospitals, I ran a hospital. And, um, you know, I was like, this just isn't for me. And I left. But what I didn't see was to look deep into wanting to be a doctor. What did that mean? And what it meant was, I want to help people and right. I want to help people heal their hearts. And I don't have to be a doctor to do that. But right. all I could relate to was being a doctor. Mm -hmm. So when people see their dreams in that way of, well, I can't because of this, I can't. It's like, well, maybe that's just because that's what it looks like here. That's all you can relate to. But what it really is, is something deeper. So mm -hmm. let's dig in deeper to what that could be and why there's that roadblock there. Right, right. And you know, Henry Ford once said, "Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right." Mm -hmm. And I and I think you know, I personally think that, that that God gives us what we focus on. And I think when we're focused on can't, God lovingly gives us can't because you know, whatever you ask in God's name is granted. He didn't say <laughs> if, if it's good for you or bad for you. He just said whatever you ask is granted. If you have faith, and so, you know, when I think I think I see what you're saying, and it's like people get so focused on can't and won't and and not able or unworthy even they get into unworthy a lot, and and they limit their dreams, and it's so fascinating. You know, I I'm I'm someone who has lived his dream most of his life. I mean, I've done everything I've ever wanted to do, and I still do everything I ever I want to do, and I do it at lightning speed. And I think it's it's strictly because of the fact that I I don't limit my dreams. And do you find in your work that that you deal with people who are overcoming their subconscious uh, fears and anxieties from their, you know, what their parents told them or you know, their background, their subconscious beliefs? Yeah, absolutely. Because 
when you're young, you're influenced by the people around you. I mean, you're no matter what age, you're influenced by the people around you, but you're molded by your family, especially your parents, your brothers and sisters, your friends, and you you live in in that bubble of I don't know any better, you, you know, and you're influenced by their fears you're influenced by their aspirations and so if they're in a limited place you're in a limited place because there's boundaries that you're you you have a connection with what what they are and you're like well I can't leave these boundaries and I've watched people get to their next level job and then be pulled down by the people around them and so they fail because it's like well I I would thought that this was what we wanted. I thought this was for the greater good. I thought getting this job was going to help everybody, but the anger and resentment of you did it and I didn't. Mm -hmm. And now you're, you're in two different places and it's like, well, you made it here and we're not here. So we're going to lose you. Mm -hmm. And that right. happens a lot. And you have to really, that's a tough call because every time you get closer to your dreams, you're growing, you're growing as a person and you're leaving that old person behind. And that old person, that old version of you doesn't want to go because it's, it's just going to sit there. And it, it, it's essentially that part, part of you dies and it keeps going and your inside is like fighting of, well, I'm scared. Cause I don't know what that is. I don't know anything else. Mm -hmm. but your future, your, your desires, your dreams are like, well, we got to keep moving and to separate that. And then you see that in people around you that are like, but wait a second, I'm not ready for this. I don't know how to deal with that. I'm no, I'm not prepared to go there and I'm not really invited to go there. So I see that a lot. And that comes from those limitations that you were grow up with of, of the people around you. And that could be a, a hard choice of what to do and that can limit you. And then, and then that cycle starts again, then you have children and then you do that to them. Right. But the people right. that are like, I recognize this, I see this, I see my limitations and either I accept them or I don't. But when you're like, you don't have to have those limitations. Don't bring those with you. Don't give those to other people. That's why it's so important to encourage your people around you to encourage your cycle. And once you see your dreams happening, bring people with you. Don't, don't leave them behind. Be like, this is so exciting. I want to help you get your, to your dream. And when you, you invite people as on part of your journey, and that's what I like to do is to be like, I'm doing this. This is my dream. Come on guys, help me. And when you ask people to help you and bring them with you, they're like, well, we, what, what is my dream? We, She's doing it. Oh my gosh, I want to do it. And when you all encourage and help each other, you can break that cycle of the limitations from the people around you, bring them with you. Not everybody wants to come. Yeah. So you can break those cycles and, and break those choices. And I, you know, myself and my family, I, I, I saw that. And once I started inviting them to the journey and be on the journey, their excitement level is so wonderful. It's changed their mindset. And although there's places where they're like, well, my limit is here, I, and, but I'm excited for you and I want you to keep going instead of like, oh, you, oh, so you're gonna go have this fancy job. Oh, you're gonna go and do all these fun speaking engagements and we can't go. And it's like, well, you can go, here's a ticket, be there. Watch Watch it on YouTube, you know, whatever. And they're like, you know, we really just can't travel right now. We're going to watch it on YouTube. And then we're excited for you. We're going to be your cheerleaders in the background. So instead of when that break happens and push the people around you away, learn how to be like, come on, guys, let's go. And learn to say to your old self, you have the choice. You can evolve and be at my level or old self, you got to go there. So you once. I'm working with people, you see those limitations and you learn how to break those cycles. And sometimes you don't want it. Sometimes it's not necessary. Sometimes you are not ready for that place in the cycle to get to that next thing. But once you see that peak moment, you're like, I'm going to dive in and go into that next circle. 
uh, you see how you could bring people, not bring people, how to change the game and how to just keep that positivity train going. Cause you need all the, you need a team to come with you to be positive and to be traveling on your, on your path. I, I, yeah, I, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stunned. <laughs> um, so Tamara, when, I know when you, when you do the passion test, you, you guide people in very much the same way. Yeah. Um, when, and so this is a question for both of you, actually. Um, do you find that you have to, for, to help someone br- rescue their dream, or to come, you know, to to their to happiness. Do you find that they they oftentimes have to go through a trauma, and, and to to realize that they can come through one. And and because I know in my in my life, you know, I've like I said, I've done almost everything I've ever wanted to do in my life. But you know, I came from an abusive family, and I and I didn't re- you know you don't you never realize how how abusive things are until like somebody on Facebook yesterday said. You know, share the last memory of hugging your father because Father's Day is coming up, right? Mm-hmm. And I stopped and I thought about it. And my response was, I can't remember ever doing that. Wow. And and it was like, wow, that that's really because you know, I hug my kid every day. Right. <laughs> I tell him I love him twice a day, but I in my life, I literally cannot remember ever hugging my father. Um so, but but that was the trauma that I had to go through to overcome to, to get to the point where I could be independent enough to go, okay, I'm going to go get my dreams and, and do those things. But do you find in both of your modalities, do you find that you have to, that, that people have to go through something to come to the place to realize they, they can get through something? I would say yes. And it doesn't have to be a big T trauma. It can be a, you know, a little T trauma. It can be just a big transition or a big change. Like the kids flew, fly the coop, right? Your son is going to go to college. So a lot of people who come to me are in some form of transition. So it might be traumatic, like divorce or death, or it might be little trauma. Like kids are going out of the house. Now they're all grown up, grown up. And what do I do? Who am I without them? Or I've just moved across the country and started a new job and I don't know anybody. So what do I do? Um, And so definitely, I think, I think people need to recognize their own stuckness and have a desire for change. Like a lot of people are comfortable being uncomfortable. The subconscious loves that. So Mm -hmm. uh, we have to get to the point where what's known is not comfortable anymore. And, and we have to cultivate some courage to be willing to make the changes. That's my perspective. Debbie, I'd love to hear yours. Well, if it doesn't feel right, it's not your truth. Um, and I, I, I've been trying to live by that and teach that. I also think that there is power in those moments. And yeah, it doesn't have to be a big T trauma as well. There's power in silence. There's power in fasting. It was when you're taking away layers, you're taking away pieces that distract you, people, pieces that fulfill you when you're in a place of what are my, what do I need right now? What is going to take care of me? What is going to keep me alive? What is going to keep me moving? And when you have, when you're in those places, the true answers come out right away because the instinct of what you need right then and there I mean, if your house is on fire, what are the first three things you're going to grab, right? Are you going to be like, well, I got to get the milk out of the fridge. No, you're going to grab the kids, the dog. Let's go. Come on. Like, that's it. That's all we need. So when you're in those moments of God, where am I supposed to be right now? What is it? What is serving me? What is my truth? And when you sit in the silence, those answers come. They may not come in that exact silent moment but they, they, they come. And when you're in that place of, oh my gosh, what do I need right now? What serves me that, that comes. And you, you, once you learn that tool, it, you don't have to put yourself in a burning fire to get those answers. You know that all I need to do is to sit in myself with God, get to the center of my heart and ask him, 
what serves me, what is my truth, and where do I need to be? And you know that that's where the answers are going to come from. When you act frantic and when you're all over the place and when you listen to society of, gosh, these hallmark qualities are horrible. Like Because yes, it's wonderful. Oh, Father's Day, Mother's Day, Siblings Day, all of these wonderful things. But it they more focus on the reminders of, but what about you? Do you have that anymore? Or oh, remember that? Remember, like society plays a game on you, right? So you you have a trauma and, and it, it hurts your feelings to go back into that memory, but you're in a good place. Like, mm-hmm. but I'm overcome that. So once you're like, no, 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 that doesn't feel good. That doesn't serve me. This is a little, this is a little trick here in the, in the universe that I'm not going to play because God doesn't do that to me. Mm-hmm. I have memories. I have good memories. I have new memories that are coming to me. And I am going to sit in that because that is my truth. And that is what feels good. And I'm not going to let a, a bad TV commercial make me feel. Right. Feel any different. <laughs> right. Bad, I, I, bad social media posts. <laughs> right. Well, I, see, I, I, I don't even take it as bad. I just took it as, oh, that's, that's interesting to me because I'm not, I'm not in that space anymore. You know, uh, Tamara and I had the, had the distinct pleasure the other day of, of interviewing Neil Donald Walsh. And one of the, one of the moments that really, stuck out for me in that conversation was I said, so what's happening for Neil next? And he said, uh, I, I don't know. He says, I live in the present moment. And when I, when I heard him say that, I knew exactly what he meant because, you know, when Moses talked to the burning bush, he said, what's your name in the bush? bush I am that I am. He didn't say I was that I was, or I will be that I will be. Right. <laughs> he said, I am that I am. So he's and amen itself means here, right here now done. So it's all very present moment. So for me, I had to look at my my those past traumas as, as you said, Debbie, about breaking the cycles and and not carrying that forward. So, the reason I hug my son, the reason I tell my son I love him a couple of times a day when he's with me, is because I don't I'm breaking that cycle, and I'm 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 a firm believer that God is love, and so we we represent love in the life. And I love the thing you said about when the with the fire and getting the the kids and the dog and the stuff out of the house because. Uh, I, I have been to 30 countries around the world. And, and when I ask my audiences in those countries, what is the most important thing to you? They've never said their religion. They've never said their job. They've never, they've always said my family. It's always number one, everywhere, everywhere in the world, everybody's the same. They have the representations of love in their life. Their family is, is what is always number one. And I, because I believe that God is love. I think the family is the representation of God. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. I'm there off my go. soapbox. I'm off my Amen. soapbox now. <laughs> well, we're all extensions of God, right? So we're right. all made made from God. So yeah, your family is every piece of God, just as much as you are. Mm-hmm. And we need to love and appreciate and nourish that. So yeah, right. God is love. So, so how how do you rescue a dream? How do I rescue a dream? Well, I think it's fun. I think it's it's so great to get into somebody and they'll be like, oh, a hundred dreams. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> or they'll be like, a hundred dreams, I can get you 200. And then you know, they get all you get all excited. Um, I I've been crushed a million times and I learned, okay, do I want to live my life this way or not? So I've learned to peel the onions to peel the layers on the onion of, okay, why? Just like I told you the example of being a doctor. So there's one other famous example of a gentleman that's like, I want to be a major league ball player, but I'm 56 years old. I don't really know how to play baseball. I've never been on a team. I played, you know, in elementary school and that's it. And it's like, okay, instant dream crushing, right? Like, well, you can't, that's no, that's not going to happen. And I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that. I don't believe that there's a no to any dream. Let's let's talk about it. So you want to be a major league ball player. Okay, let's look at what's against you here. Age, you don't know how to play. But let's look at the game. Why do you want to be a major league ball player? Is it because you want an audience? Is it because you want a quick hit? Is it because you love the travel? You love the crowds? You love the teamwork? You know, let's dig in really, really, really deep and get, get to all these layers and we get to all these pieces. And it, and it was, I like the team aspect, 
I like to travel. I do enjoy quick wins. I enjoy being appreciated and those quick wins. So I was able to get him into a high-end project management job for a sports related company. Mm. And so it wasn't exactly a major league ball player, but it was always being in that excitement of the game. It was it's quick wins and they're big, exciting, quick wins. You're in a team environment and you're kind of like the hero. You're like, I put this all together. And when we, we made this happen and there's just, just accomplishments all day going on through this job. So it looked like a major league ball player, but you know, we, we unpeeled all these layers to find out what the true depth of what that meant and to get him into this job that was the ex- every single thing that he wanted. And it just had a different coat of paint on it. That was it. I That's, love that. that. That is awesome. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, when I work with clients, it's finding finding the, the purpose and the meaning. And so it doesn't matter like you said, the paint, I like that analogy. It doesn't matter what color the paint is. You can, no matter what you're doing as a job or a career, you can always be living your purpose or your passion. I can mm-hmm. always be inspiring others by walking my talk and, and spreading love and being a loving human. If I'm a garbage collector or a cashier or the president of the United States, I can do that in any capacity. I just have to know why I'm doing what I'm doing and what my purpose and meaning are. Right. Right. And I, I love, I love the, the hundred dreams. I yeah, think that's, that's so cool. very cool. And um, there was a, there's an author and a famous adventurer named John Goddard and John Goddard. He, one of the things he, he did was he had his bucket list of a hundred things and it was things that he wanted to achieve in his life and do in his life. He wanted to go to, you know, take a boat down the Nile. He had all these, this list of things that he was going to do. And um, my friend, Dan Thurman, who was a, a world-class keynote speaker, he had a big, he, John Goddard was a hero of his in, in, in what he had done. And um, Dan used to always say, you never know who's in your audience. And one day during one of his speeches, he was talking about John Goddard. And afterwards, he ended up, um, this little girl walked up to him. And she says, John Goddard's my grandfather. And she connected the two of them. And then my friend, Dan actually went down the Nile with John Goddard and John Goddard asked him an interesting question. He says, how many of the hundred do you think I've achieved? He says, he said, no, he said, well, he said, he said, how many goals do you think, think I've achieved? And Dan said, he said, you probably are in the eighties by now. He said, 247. Wow. Yeah. He, he said, you don't stop, you don't stop creating dreams. You don't stop setting goals. You know, you're like, it's an adventure. It's a motion. You're going downstream. You're following a river and in motion, you're always looking at the next thing you're doing and you're always creating more. Your dreams are in motion, just like everything else in your life. And I love the fact that, that you said the one person said only a hundred, you know, <laughs> because, because <laughs> to me, it's it, the, the, the concepts of limiting, you know, you, so you say a hundred people go, Oh my God, how am I going to come up with a hundred dreams? And then somebody else might say, oh, I could do that in my sleep. And it, and it literally is what they think about it, what they believe about that, that number. And um, I, lo- I love the fact that you're, you're putting it at that, but then you're, you're also not limiting it on to exactly what they're saying, because sometimes they don't understand that what they really want is the feeling of that or something of that nature. I love that. Love that. Yeah. You're, you only know what you can relate to. So right. That's the same example of the doctors like, well, I feel this, this is what it looks like, but that's the only thing I know. And once you really can just take off the limitations, you, you really can feel the feelings and emotions. And that's what it's about. Wow. So, so Debbie, how do people, how do people get a hold of you and work with you? Oh, uh, you can find me at all social media at Debbie, D-E-B-B-Y, Cruz, K-R-U-S-Z. My website is the same, debbiecruz.com. And I would love to offer all of your listeners uh, a free discovery session, a one-on-one discovery session, and also a free copy, a free download copy of my latest novel, Soul, Soulmate's Body. Oh, let me write that down so I don't forget that. Soulmate's <laughs> Body. Okay, I will put all of that in the description below. Um, 
Uh, I, I This has been just lovely. Tamara, what are your thoughts on our conversation today? I agree. It's been just lovely. <laughs> this is my cup of tea. And I love talking about how to connect people with their hearts and and reignite those dreams. So it's a beautiful thing you're doing. And I loved, love this chat. I love listening. I feel very calm and relaxed discussing this. <laughs> Could I have a cat in my lap? I don't know. But <laughs> you're, you're, you're living the dream, baby. You're living the dream. <laughs> I am. I am. I love it. Well, Debbie, thank you so much for being here. It's been absolutely lovely. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Oh, you are oh, quite it's welcome. Been a pleasure. Tamara, you want to take us out of here and into the close? Sure I'm ready. All right. I invite all of our listeners to go ahead and start making that list of 100 dreams. What a fabulous way to spend a day or an hour, depending on how long it takes you. <laughs> we are grateful you're here. We hope that spending time with us meets one of your dreams. And who knows, maybe you'll be a guest one day. And that could be a dream of yours too. It's a dream of ours to make sure that we're bringing something to each one of you and we couldn't do it without you. So we'll talk to you again next week. Thanks. Bye. Thank you for joining us at Spirit Cafe, a place where you can safely explore your spirituality without the guilt or dogma of religion. Please leave all comments on the Spirit Cafe podcast Facebook page or beneath our videos on YouTube.